How many of you in the audience, just right off the bat, are vegans? Raise your hands, please. Vegans, vegans. That's pretty good. Like, what, 50%? How many are vegetarians? Okay, cool. Uh, how many of you are thinking about going vegan or vegetarian? How many of you don't speak English and don't know a word that I'm saying right now? <laughs> All of you? Okay. That's good, because I have no idea what I'm saying. Anyway, um, thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Ken Spector from a website called Happy Cow. It's also apps as well. How many of you have heard of Happy Cow? That's pretty good. And how many haven't heard of Happy Cow? How many of you would like to hear about Happy Cow who haven't heard of Happy Cow? That's good. Okay. So Happy Cow is the world's largest vegan and vegetarian restaurant guide and health food store guide. Um, I've been vegan for 25 years. How many people have been vegan longer than 25 years? Not one? So I'm like the grandfather vegan in the room. That's cool. Um, cool. So how many, uh, do we have any people who have been vegan or vegetarian longer than five years? 10 years? 15 years? 20 years? Do we have 30 years? Okay, we don't, so between 20, 22 or so years or so? 25 years, that's what I just said. We've been vegan the same amount of time, that's great. Vegan, vegetarian, almost vegan. Okay, cool. cool. Okay, so as I mentioned, Happy Cow is the world's largest vegan and vegetarian restaurant guide and health food store guide. Um, let's check if this clicker works. I don't know if it, yeah, it does, look at that. Okay, so Happy Cow is a website resource. Uh, we have apps for Android and iPhone to help you find vegan, vegetarian restaurants and health food stores. Um, we have community, social media, interviews, video information, and we also have a Happy Cow cookbook, which I have in my bag over there. You know, I haven't done a PowerPoint presentation in my entire life, so this is really new for me, as you could tell. Okay, so this is our website. Um, we're about maybe a month away from our brand new website. This is our old version. Uh, let me continue. This is our app, actually. If you hear any music in the video, I actually compose music as well. So I'm just going to show you a little bit of a rundown of the app here. Um, that did not work on this version of PowerPoint. Let me see. Let me go back. OK, let me try that again. OK. This is just a rundown of our app. You can go to Paris, France. It's a list of all the vegetarian, vegan restaurants. Those are vegan and vegetarian restaurants throughout Paris, France. There's a loving hut. You can add photos or add reviews through our ad or through our app. You can add a trip, Paris, France, for example. This keeps the data offline, which is really essential if you don't have a good internet connection. And then you can. So that's a restaurant, there's a review, you can call. It's, uh, it's an all-in-one app that helps you find vegan food. Okay, so that's our app. Let's continue down the line. So glad you're with me on this. Okay, so we have Facebook, we have Twitter, we have YouTube, we have Instagram, Pinterest, and Google+. We're trying to build a large vegan community. We're doing it in a variety of ways. Forums, which you can participate in on our website. Um, you can like us on Facebook and like us on Twitter. We tweet about various events and various information uh, that's useful for vegans like myself and like many of you. Um, okay, let me continue. Okay, that is our Happy Cow mascot. How many of you are aware that we have a Happy Cow mascot? Okay, I didn't bring it this trip. We have one in Berlin, but it didn't make it here in time. But anyway, let me um, show you, if I can. Let's see here, wait a minute. Okay, and the cow actually dances. Okay, this was at an event in Southern California about two weeks ago. Um, I happen to know the cow very intimately because I actually am the cow. So I can't dance very well, but. That's a whole different story. Um, okay, one thing that I've done quite a bit of over the years, I've interviewed maybe thousands of celebrities on camera. Um, I used to uh, do celebrity interviews for Microsoft on camera. And 
I wasn't really that interested in continuing to talk about things that weren't relevant to me. So one thing that I've done is I brought all my celebrity interviewing experience over to Happy Cow, and I've interviewed a lot of celebrities for Happy Cow. I put this together for this presentation. This is just an example of some of the uh, interviews that I've done. I was going to ask you about water.org and veganism and how veganism ties into water.org. It takes uh, 2,400 gallons of water to create a steak or a pound of meat and 25 gallons to create a pound of wheat. And I was just wondering whether you thought of going vegan or what your thoughts are on veganism as pertaining to fresh water throughout the world. My thoughts on veganism are that it's a wonderful thing to do. I just can't do it. Okay. <laughs> I tried. I, Casey Affleck and I made a movie in the desert in Argentina like 12 years ago, and, and he's a vegan, and I tried to eat vegan, and I just, I lasted like two days. I just, I, 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 I literally can't do it, and I know that's, that, that might be bad, but in Argentina, it's what, impossible. Yeah, what, what were you eating um, that, that made it difficult well, to be vegan? We were eating cans of, de like dented cans of garbanzo beans for like weeks at a time, because we were really out. Uh, you know, in Valley Fertile, which is on the west side of that country, like there's not a lot out there at all, and so he didn't have many options. It's not something that it's not a it's not a way of life that many people practice in, in Argentina or in that part of Argentina in particular. So he had a he had a hard time finding the things that he could eat. So what would you say to people that are watching about veganism as far as how it could help the planet? Do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> Let's okay. talk a little bit about your child. You have how many of you know who that was? How many of you don't know who that was? You really? Okay. So anyway, um, that was really interesting because uh, I put him on the spot. He wasn't expecting that at all with that question. And as a result of that question, a lot of people think he may be thinking about going vegan now. He, to eat dented cans of garbanzo beans, I don't believe is trying to go vegan. How many of you have tried to eat dented cans of garbanzo beans for two weeks? Any of you? I haven't either. Well, I actually just got back. I would show you some of these other interviews. I interviewed Stevie Wonder a couple weeks ago about veganism. That's um, Zoe Deschanel. That's Stevie Wonder. Inspector with Happy Cow. I'm a fellow vegan. Now, you can see me on a lot of the uh, videos, but some of the videos I just do, you know, on red carpets, and some, some I don't. Um, let me do... Um, let me see if I can shoot that forward. Okay. So anyway, Denny Kenza Garbanzo beats. I was in Argentina last week, and... Um, he is correct. It's really difficult to be a vegan in Argentina. Um, really difficult. And I was also in uh, Patagonia in Chile. And um, this is actually a picture of my hotel room. As you can see, my bed is back there. And I was hungry and uh, I couldn't find any beans. You don't really eat a lot of beans in Argentina or Chile. So I, I actually went and bought some lentils. That was the worst thing I've ever eaten in my entire life. You see, they were in like a gel, no salt, no garlic. And I kind of drank them down, and I did, really didn't enjoy that very much. So anyway, so I can see where he was talking about, but there are so many vegan and vegetarian restaurants in Los Angeles that there really is no excuse not to try to go vegan properly. I don't know what he was thinking. Um, so anyway, this is our Happy Cow cookbook. How many of you know that we have a cookbook available? None of you. Okay, the Happy Cow cookbook is recipes from top-rated vegan restaurants around the world. So we. Went around the world, there's about 40 restaurants, and we collected a variety of restaurants. This one, Portobello in Portland, Oregon. Does that look like a den of can of garbanzo beans to you? Uh, not to me, I don't know, it looks a lot better than that. Um, so this is Portobello. This is, um, these are uh, just uh, excerpts from the book, Luna's Living Kitchen. It's really just to show you what vegan food looks like around the world. I'm just gonna show you some of these pictures. That's Real Food Daily in Los Angeles. Hopefully these will inspire you if you like to cook. Um, okay, let's keep going. I did a bunch of these. I don't know why, but uh, okay, let's keep going. Buddha's Burgers in Tel Aviv. Tel Aviv is one of the uh, most populated vegan destinations in the world as far as the number of vegan vegetarian restaurants. Hangali. Boy, I did a lot of these. Okay. Okay. Cities with the most vegan restaurants on Happy Cow. Now I'm going to ask you. Of all the places in the world, which place or which destination do you feel has the most vegan restaurants? Which city? Okay, Berlin. Okay, anyone else? Who? India. In India? Delhi. Delhi. Okay, anyone else? Anyone else? Name a city. Where, where do you think? Where? 
Barcelona, okay. Yeah. Warsaw, okay. Anyone else? Yes. I'm sorry? Ethiopia. Ethiopia, okay. Anyone else? Okay, let's go through these. Kyoto, 26 vegan restaurants. That's not number one, that's number 10. Portland, Oregon, 28 vegan restaurants. Toronto, can, num can anyone name number seven? Prague. Prague actually claims, and I did a little bit of study on this, and they're, they're close with Warsaw on this, to have the most vegan restaurants per person in any city. So let's see. And by the way, there are four vegan restaurants that I know of in this city, and I've eaten at all but one of them, and they're all great. They're all really good. So Los Angeles. Now, Los Angeles is such a large city that what I did is location count within a 15-mile radius. Los Angeles is so large, where I'm from, that if we were to count all of Los Angeles, we would have 67 vegan restaurants. Bangkok, Thailand, 38. Ho Chi Minh, 38. New York City, 40 in a 15-mile radius, and then 69 total throughout the New York area. Berlin, number one. Anyone? Anyone? Tokyo. 56 vegan restaurants in a 15-square-mile area of Tokyo. How many of you have been to Tokyo? What did you think of the food there? Did you have the Happy Cow app? Yeah, yeah. I was in Tokyo about five years ago, and um, I will admit that without, without our app or without our website, it's really difficult to find vegan food in Tokyo. They eat a lot of meat there, and it was difficult. But if you have the app, you can find the little places. There's temple food um, called Shojin Ryorai, and it's uh, delicious food at the temples in Japan. So anyway, Tokyo is, the, you could say, the top vegan destination. However, I, I'm going to have to beg to differ, because Tokyo is a really large, dense city. And walking from vegan restaurant to vegan restaurant isn't really that possible. It's, it, I mean, it is possible, but it takes a long time. So what I did is, these are, this is Tokyo. This is um, a 15-mile, um, I'm sorry, this is a one-mile radius. I decided to break it down to one mile, because after one mile, the walk gets to be a little bit long, one square mile. That's what Tokyo looks like as far as density goes, OK? So what do we have? 11 vegan restaurants. Let's look at. Berlin, that's pretty good too. We have 14 vegan restaurants in one square mile, or kilometer, but you can, obviously kilometers less, but that's one square mile. Okay, let's go to New York. New York's pretty dense, that's one square mile. Okay, now let's go to Los Angeles. As you can see, Los Angeles is such a large city that I picked an area that had the most vegan restaurants, and that's the West Hollywood area, and there are um, 10 vegan restaurants and one square mile. Now we have Prague. This is the city in Europe that claims to be the most dense as far as vegan restaurants. As you can see, there are a number of vegan restaurants in the area. But I will say my favorite, Warsaw, Poland. Um, I'm actually going to Warsaw tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to be speaking in Warsaw. Hopefully, I'll have the presentation. I'm practicing on you so I can give a better presentation. But anyway, Warsaw, as you can see, do you see what that uh, the arrow is, right? Is there a little pointer on this? The, the arrow right there, that's where I'm staying. So I'm surrounded by vegan restaurants. If you look on that one street, I mean, that's one square mile. So that's like one eighth of a mile right there. So Warsaw is one of the most dense vegan places in the world as far as vegan restaurants. Um, I will show you, uh, oh, actually, do I have that video? Uh, yeah, so we'll get back to, I, I did a little video in Warsaw called the Warsaw Vegan Explosion, and you're going to learn about how Warsaw went from having two vegan restaurants about four years ago to 23 vegan restaurants today. 15 vegan restaurants were added to Warsaw in 2015 alone. I went last year to Warsaw, and there have been nine restaurants, vegan restaurants, added since I was there last year alone. Okay, tips from a world traveling vegan, which I am. I've been to many places throughout the world. And why am I opening up this slide with garlic? Does anyone know? Okay, garlic has saved me for a good part of my life from getting colds. I don't know if you know this, many of you may, or many, many of you may not, but garlic, if you have a bit of a sore throat and you feel like you're getting sick, if you eat a clove of garlic and then you go to sleep, by the next morning your cold will probably be gone. It's worked for me for probably 15 years. Um, in fact, this trip, I thought I was getting cold on my way over here. I downed the garlic, and 
it's gone. So garlic is one of your greatest friends if you're a traveler in general, whether you're vegan or not. It has to be raw, it cannot be cooked. There's a chemical in uh, garlic called allicin, which gives you the wonderful breath that everyone loves to kiss after you eat it. That is what kills colds. Colds do not like that. Rhinovirus hates garlic. So remember that. Let's kill colds for once and for all. Um, okay, so one thing that I like to do before I go to any destination is I like to uh, research the destinations. I often contact people on Facebook. I go to you know, Facebook groups. Airbnb, I like to stay you know, with vegans or people that are into yoga or things like that. That makes a lot of sense. And couch surfing is really helpful because you can search couch surfing for the word vegan and then you can ca uh, call people and uh, uh, contact people that are interested in veganism like yourself. So I you know, really like that. So I've used couch surfing quite extensively. Okay, does anyone know where I took this interface from? This is an app called Google Translate. How many of you have Google Translate on your phone right now? How many of you have iPhones, Androids, iPhones, Androids, smartphones? Okay, cool. This app is so cool. This has saved me so many times in different countries. Um, basically, what you do is you put, you can download the fonts. It's a free application. You download the, um, the, the languages that you need, and then you put in the words that you need translated, and you're able to see them in the language. You can say them in the language. But one feature that I love, which I don't think I can see on here, is there's a little camera button on the app, and you can put the, your camera in front of a label, and it'll read the label to you in your language live, which is awesome. So you can actually, th these are words that I would recommend you bring with you, buttermilk, milk, honey, gelatin, and eggs, um, and then whey, butter, fish, beef, lard. Just be familiar with those, uh, those names if you go to Th Thailand or any other place, because what you see is not necessarily what you get. You might see a piece of tofu on a skewer, and it might be soaked in fish. And if you're vegan, you probably don't like that very much. So these are good words to have translated before you go to the country, just in case you lose your phone. OK. And there it is, actually. Um, do you see the camera button? You can actually just put the camera over your, uh, over your text anywhere. You can actually do road signs as well, and it'll translate it live. OK. How many of you know what the vegan passport is? How many of you have a vegan passport? How many of you have a passport? OK. When I ask that in America, it's about 5%. So anyway, so this is the vegan passport. This is available online. This is my favorite page in the vegan passport because you know, I was in, I think it was in Thailand. And what you do is you open up the book, you find the page that has the language that says, I am vegan, this is what I eat, this is what I don't eat. And this guy was looking at it, and I couldn't figure out why he was taking so long to look at it. And I, I didn't know what to do, so he ended up bringing me just a bowl of meat, and it was the most bizarre thing ever. And then I realized the guy couldn't read. So this is something that makes it much easier. Um, just very self-explanatory. If you just even take a picture of that right now with your cell phone and have that, and then you open up your cell phone and show people, they get it. It even has like a little honeycomb, and turtles and look at all those things and then that's what we do eat so okay um, knives I wouldn't bring this on your carry-on but a knife is a great thing to have when you're traveling um, you can hey, as I said I was in Tr uh, Chile Argentina Uruguay and Peru last week and I was having trouble in a lot of places because I was in like the outback I was in the countryside and just having a knife made it so much easier to cut vegetables and make salads and things like that so it was a really nice thing to have um, grapes this is something that I recommend when you're traveling. I recommend bringing them on the airplane. It's a great snack on the airplane. It's not like oranges, which some people are offended by because of the citric acid. So grapes are a great snack um, to bring on an airplane. Um, I actually brought some on my flight from Los Angeles to Sweden a couple days ago. And um, this is what happened. They were held in security. And I couldn't figure out why. And it turns out that they had fertilizer on them because they were organic grapes. So they kept them for a long, I was, for an hour, this is what my luggage looked like. So I had to borrow my friend's camera to take this picture and share it with you. And um, the one was laughing at me, but she wouldn't give me my luggage. So uh, if I were to take out an airplane, it certainly wouldn't be with organic grapes. It might be with conventional grapes, but not with organic grapes. But anyway, so this was uh, the one problem. So I would suggest if you're bringing grapes on an airplane, wash them. I couldn't believe that they were held in security. What are these, and why do I have a picture of them? These are mixed nuts. 
Um, I made this mistake when I was in Chile and Argentina last week. I, I, didn't, I went through my first bag of peanuts, and then I realized that peanuts are really easy to find anywhere in the world. But what are more difficult to find and easy to store are mixed nuts, like cashews and pecans and things like that. So if you're going to buy nuts and you're going to be traveling as a vegan, I would highly recommend you bring mixed nuts with you because like, I'm not going to eat another peanut my life, my, the rest of my life because I indulged on peanuts because I wasn't eating anything else for half the trip. So, okay. These are some ideas too. Again, I would try to stay away from peanuts. So this is something that you can bring as a snack with you. If you find like dehydrated vegetables, you can dehydrate them yourself, put them in a bag. These are a really good suggestion to have with you. Um, this is, you can put this in a bag, um, just nutritional powder. The one thing that I noticed about Argentina was the bread was always stale. If there's anyone in here from Argentina, I'm very sorry, but I couldn't figure out why 90% of the bread that I had at Italian restaurants was stale and like three days old. Not only that, but I'll get to this a little bit later, a lot of their bread in Argentina and South America has beef fat in it, which I'm not used to. So that was not uh, something I was too interested in. Um, B12, how many of you are vegans and how many of you are vegans who do not supplement with vitamin B12? You, you don't supplement vitamin B12. Okay, um, anyone else? How many of you supplement with B12, vitamin B12? Okay, good, good, good. So from what I've garnered, there are very few sources of vitamin B12 for vegans. Um, this is something I do supplement, very little. I actually take about a pill a month and I've tested all my levels. Uh, again, I've been vegan 25 years and I'm not deficient in anything. So um, B12 is something you might wanna take, you know, it can last in your system up to 30 years, but you do wanna get, introduce it, it's a, you know, from a bacteria, you wanna introduce that into your, into your diet. Okay, what is this? Uh, we have vitamin D3. How many of you are familiar with vitamin D? Okay, good, good. I have many vegan friends and they often get their blood tested. And one of the biggest problems that vegans tend to have, especially in northern climates like Canada, Norway, England, is vitamin D3 deficiency, which can eventually cause calcium not to assimilate, which can cause brittle bones over time. So vitamin D comes from the sun. There is not enough sun in Norway in the winter to give any of you enough vitamin D, and it's highly recommended that you do supplement vitamin D. Um, so vitamin D is a really good thing, especially for vegans, because you can get some vitamin D from eggs and things like that, um, which I don't recommend for other reasons, um, cholesterol reasons and just ethics reasons. But vitamin D3 is something you might want to take. Now, something that, one thing that I learned, which I thought was really interesting, is if you want to make your own vitamin D, you can take mushrooms and put them in the sun for 24 hours just two eight hour, or maybe two to three eight hour days, the mushrooms now have vitamin D in them. You can pulverize them, sun dry them, and then you'll have a good source of vitamin D from mushrooms. So, um, omegas, omegas from fish. Um, we've contaminated our oceans quite significantly with mercury. Uh, it takes a drop of mercury to contaminate an entire lake. And as a result, you know, you know, not only ethics reasons, but also for reasons of the fact that there is mercury in fish. Um, and also the fact that omega-3s are more assimilable in the human body from algae, e uh, EPA, DHA from algae, as well as from flax seeds. So if you know what flax seeds are, look it up. I'd recommend you grind those up and just take those regularly because flax seeds have omega-3s, which are good for your brain and good for your mood. So good thing to uh, keep in mind. Okay, plain food. How many of you know you can order vegan meals on airplanes when there are meals available? Okay, this is my favorite airline for food. Uh, it's Emirates Air. How many of you have flown Emirates? Anyone? Emirates Air, yeah. So Emirates Air, I mean, they even, they carve their cucumbers. I mean, it doesn't really look like coach plain food to me. Um, it's, it, it is vegan. Um, I do order vegan food on a lot of flights. These days, I haven't been doing it as much. I've been bringing my own food on just for environmental reasons. I don't like to use a lot of plastic, even though they do recycle these. But um, the fact is you can order vegan meals on airplanes, which I think is pretty awesome. There's another one, not bad, that's on Air Canada. Okay. Now for a meal that wasn't very good. This was from uh, uh, Argentina to El Salvador. I don't know what that is, but it wasn't good at all. It was like a cake, a corn cake that had no salt, no spices, not very good. Now, 
The reason I took this picture, um, this was from El Salvador to Los Angeles, is because even though I ordered a vegan meal on an airplane, I looked at the dressing and I said, creamy Italian, this, I don't know if this is vegan. Well, it turns out after I squirted it on and I looked at the ingredients, I realized, does that look vegan to you? But not to me. Those are the ingredients in that uh, there's milk solids and cream. Not only is there, is there milk, but look at all these ingredients. Potassium sorbate. How many of you, when you're making salad dressing at home, add polysorbate 60 to your salad dressing? Or calcium di disodium et eta. How many of you add that to your salad dressing? I do. So That was a joke, by the way. So I don't. Um, so anyway, that's not cool. This is what... Um, one of my meals looked like, uh, this is what I was saying, Chile and Argentina. This was about two weeks ago, and I was getting really hungry. And this is why I was eating peanuts, because it was either peanuts or do it yourself. And I was ordering potatoes. And um, they weren't bad potatoes, but that's not strawberry jam, that's actually hot sauce, because Argentina and Chile, they don't put a lot of hot into their food. So I put a hot sauce on the potatoes. It was good, but I ate so many potatoes down there, it was too much. This is this, one of the single worst meals I've ever had in that area. Just to give you an idea of you know, vegan challenge locations, in Argentina, for one reason or another, they use tomato uh, um, juice on their pasta. And I couldn't figure that out. This is actually after I ordered another can of tomato juice to, with no salt or anything to put on my pasta. So that wasn't really very good. But these are the areas where you end up eating or trying to find things to eat. And so when I went to the grocery store in Patagonia in southern Chile, I ended up finding Cocha yo-yo. I, I, I couldn't figure out what it was. It's actually a, a seaweed, but I didn't know how to use it, and I didn't think I could you know, just eat it like that, so I wasn't sure what to do. When you're going to vegan-challenged areas of the world, again, bring your peanuts, bring your other stuff, because there are areas, and you'll be there at one point, like I was, where this is what you're looking at in the, in the um, gro grocer section. There's just nothing, n not much to eat. This was a little better. This was in Chile. Those are called myrta berries. Those are really cool. They were delicious. I can't even describe them, but they last for 24 hours and then they disintegrate. So you have to buy them in Chile. Um, they're called myrta berries. But if you notice everything else, you know, that's not really a great snack, nor is that. I mean, nor are the greens. Um, potatoes are hard to travel with. You have a couple lemons over there. The myrta berries I was just indulging in. But this is sort of a typical looking Southern American Patagonian market where, you know, that's honey over there, which I don't eat as well. Um, there was garlic back there, so at least I won't get sick. But, uh, yeah. All right. This is, uh, this is also in Chile. This are, in vegan challenge areas, you're often going to see this, perhaps at a grocery store. This is a gourmet grocery store. But again, stay away from the peanuts. Go for the more exotic stuff, because you're going to be glad you did. Because there's 7-Elevens in a lot of places, and in these places, there weren't even 7-Elevens, but there's always peanuts. All right. What are those? Anyone know what those are? Okay, how many of you have heard of pine nuts? Okay, these are pine nuts. I was really hungry in Chile. These are pine nuts from the, the monkey puzzle tree. These are their nuts. And um, I was indulging in these. They were, they're actually really good. Those are those myrtle berries. Okay, vegan nutrition deficiencies. B12, as I've talked about. Some of my friends who have been raw foodists, how many raw foodists do we have in here? How many of you know what a sort of a raw foodist is for raw gourmet? Okay. A raw foodist has a tendency, for those of you who don't know, um, raw vegan gourmet is like I, I make a ravioli using turnips as the, the shell, and I put cashew cream, which I make, and then I put sun-dried tomatoes with tomatoes in the, uh, in the um, raw food recipes. You know, I put, put sort of raw food, make it gourmet, and make it look really nice. So it's different from a salad. But anyway, people that are raw foodists oftentimes, for one reason, I have a B12 deficiency. I think part of it is because they never eat cereals that are fortified with B12. So that's something you have to watch out for. I recommend if you do decide to go vegan, to get a blood test before and after to determine whether you're deficient in things. Iron, iron, kidney beans have a lot of iron. Beans have loads of iron. There's heme and non-heme iron. Um, meat has heme iron. It's, you do assimilate more of it, but it's now being believed that it's not as good for you as non-heme iron. Calcium, calcium, broccoli, greens, collards, vitamin D, as I mentioned, from the mushrooms that have been out in the sun for you know, 18 hours or so, they have vitamin D in them, or you can just get it from the sun in the summer. And then omega-3 fatty acids, which I talked about before. I actually take, um, I just take flax seeds on my, in my suitcase and I ground them up and I put them on my food. 
Okay, my favorite vegan destinations, Berlin, Germany, Warsaw, Poland, Thailand, and Los Angeles, where I'm from. So, okay, Berlin. How many of you have heard of vegans? How many, of you, how many of you have been to Vegan's grocery store? So Vegan's in Berlin is the world's largest vegan grocery store chain. Do we have any Berliners or any people from Germany here? Yes, cool. So you're aware of Vegan's. Cool. So Vegan's was amazing. This was uh, two years ago. I did an interview with Jan Bradak of Vegan's. And uh, you can take a little tour. If I can find out where the cursor is. The uh, produce section. Uh, of our goods in our stores. That's Jan Burdock. He was organic. voted one of the most powerful guys in Germany. More than 80%. More than 80% of your products are organic. That's terrific. And uh, let's take a look over here. We have uh, we have dates, we have pears and apples and bananas and coal. Yeah, what what made this our, more interesting for me was the fact that every product in the store is vegan and it's a large store and there are many of them throughout Germany. Every product is vegan. So if you're vegan, this is heaven. So I'd recommend you get down to Berlin, or if you get to Berlin, to try out this vegan food at Vegans. They also have, um, in the Vegans on Shovel Weinestrasse in Berlin, Jan every week has a new chef, vegan chef throughout Berlin, cooking breakfast. It's like 10 euros, all you can eat. It's the best breakfast I've ever had. So this is Vegans grocery store. I saw that chain. Yeah, okay, that's from UK. Then soy, of course, it's from Okay. This is an interesting place in Berlin, which I like. It's called Vonner. And I was in Vonner about th three years ago. And there were these two women sitting down, and I asked them if they were vegan. And they said no. They were sort of laughing at me, like, why would we be vegan? And um, then, then it's not going. Um, let's see here. Okay. So anyway, this is Vonner. That's vegan meat. Donner kebab. And it is absolutely amazing. It is so amazing that when I talked to these women, they were eating this, oh, it's working now, that sandwich right there. As they were eating it, I said, well, you're, you're eating a vegan sandwich. Like, oh, no, this isn't vegan. It is vegan, and it's absolutely amazing. So if you're in Berlin, Vonner is amazing. And that garlic sauce was, like, un unbelievable. No Milk Today, also a Berlin restaurant. Um, I had the best cheesecake I've ever had in Berlin, vegan cheesecake. It was just phenomenal. Um, Berlin, Lucky Leak. This is sort of a whole vegan cuisine. There are a lot of these restaurants opening up around the world that have really fancy vegan food throughout the world. Look at this. Just the presentation is amazing. Thailand, Koh Phangan. This is really cool. Those are jackfruit, by the way. I just wanted to. Um, exotic fruit. I love exotic fruit. If I, you know, they, they say if you eat a new fruit every day the rest of your life, you still won't have eaten all of the varieties of fruits in the world. And that's true. But these are things, you, if you, unless you've been to Thailand or an exotic island on Thailand, you probably have never seen any of these. But uh, it's, it's something to do. They are vegan, and it just makes a trip more fun to look for the exotics. And uh, it's a snake fruit over there. These are rose apples. Those are really good. Sapodilla. This is my favorite. Uh, this is Koh Phangan, Thailand. How many of you have been to Thailand? Thailand is an awesome place for vegans. Just the food is amazing there for vegan or not. Um, Koh Phangan, this is a green gallery. Absolutely love their food. Okay, Eat Ko. These are, this is, again, on an island. There are four vegan restaurants on this little island called Koh Phangan. So if you're ever in Thailand and you want to go, once you paid for your flight, my hotel room was $9 a night. That include um, an access to a kayak all day. Okay, uh, if I were to get access to a kayak in Los Angeles all day, it would be around $40 just for the kayak. So $9 for my room and a kayak, which is pretty amazing. So this actually is, uh, you know, this is Green Galleries food, absolutely amazing. But Thailand, gourmet, delicious vegan food. Chiang Mai, this is one of my favorite vegan restaurants in the world. It doesn't even look as good as it is. Um, just amazing food. Okay, Bangkok, Pun Pun. This was just an outstanding vegan restaurant. I'm trying to show you as many pictures of food as possible because food is really difficult for me to describe. I mean, it's easy to see. This is at a mall, by the way. I got maybe a plate of a majority of these. It was $1.25 for my food in Thailand for this. So if you haven't been to Thailand, once you have your flight taken care of, everything else is really cheap. It's a great vacation for vegans. Look at that. This is a vegan bakery. It's called Veganery. I would, I'm not going to show you this video, 
but uh, it's, it's the most amazing. They have vegan ice creams. They have these vegan sundaes that are just decadent. And that's their own vegan chocolate up there, veganery. So if you're ever in Bangkok, this is a phenomenal bakery that you might want to try out. Warsaw, Poland. This is, let me just play this video because this is, oh, let me go back. So when we first planned our trip to Warsaw, we planned it because we saw an explosion of vegan restaurants and I wanted to find out why there were so many vegan restaurants. Can you turn it up a little bit? So this was one year ago and I'm going to Warsaw again in two days. So this is the story of why Warsaw became vegan. I'm Ken Spector with Happy Cow, and I'm here in Warsaw, Poland with a Warsaw vegan. His name is Patrick. How long have you been vegan, and how have you seen the vegan scene changing here in Warsaw? Yeah, I've been vegetarian and vegan uh, for over 20 years, and I've been living in Warsaw around that time, mm -hmm. like 20 years. And uh, when I started to live in Warsaw in 1996, and it was maybe like two places I could go out and eat. And one was like Krishna place, the other one was like a falafel place. Krova Ziva opened in 2013. One of the main Polish daily papers organized a poll for the best burger place in Warsaw. It was one class, it was not like vegetarian class, vegan class, meat class, whatever. Krova Ziva actually won it because they ruled. <laughs> Things went really fast and then the places started to pop up one after another and like the last half a year was crazy. I think every month one or two vegan joints uh, are, are opening and it's hard to catch up. So that's an amazing place, Veggie Miasto. So Poland, when I first thought about Poland because my mom had gone to school in Poland for a period of time, she said the food there was absolutely horrible. I will say that Poland is my favorite vegan or one of my favorite vegan destinations in the world now just because of the amount and the quality of vegan food that they have. Now, getting back to Los Angeles, we have a, there's this guy named Tal Ronan who's the chef for all the celebrities and he started a, a, a restaurant called Crossroads. They have amazing food there and he's actually helped to veganize Las Vegas by getting involved with Steve Wynn and putting a vegan option in all of Steve Wynn's hotels. But look at some of these dishes, they're really, really good. Okay, Gatter and Swine, my favorite vegan restaurant in Los Angeles, just phenomenal. Look at that, just art on a plate. That's, I don't know what that is. I think that's a, actually a, someone's beard got in my food somehow. Okay, so uh, now trends in vegan, let's look forward. Where is all this going? So Berlin, I just pulled out a couple of countries that I felt like were pretty influential in the world of veganism. Over there we have, uh, we have Berlin. So 2013, eight, 2014, 2015, 20 vegan restaurants were added to Berlin's Happy Cow listing. So 47 total. Warsaw, Poland, if you look, four, four, and then 20 last year. This year, there are quite a few being added. Singapore, Japan, Tokyo. As you can see, there is a growth trend. Okay, these are exclusive slides for Happy Cow. I just put these together a couple weeks ago. So anyway, Prague, Czech Republic, um, 29 vegan restaurants, you can see, their continued growth. Vegan restaurants, okay, if you look, I was trying to find out whether there was a trend in veganism. So if you look, Berlin, so that's total, 2015 is the gray one, so this is 2015, that's 2014 and 2013. So 2013 there were more added than 2014, then all of a sudden there were this many, but then total, as you can see, 47. Um, Tokyo, Japan, so I was trying to find a trend. The trend I found really is a place like Berlin, so many vegan restaurants were added before then that it's, it, it looks like it's sort of ma maybe maturing a little more in some of these places. Like. Um, if you look at Bangkok, Thailand, it went up one year, down the other year. But if you notice, there are more vegan restaurants overall. So what I was able to surmise is there's more vegan restaurants each year in these cities, whether it's year to year, not necessarily. Los Angeles, if you look, um, so 2013 in the far right, 2013, 2014, so there are fewer vegan restaurants being added, but we now have 67 vegan restaurants in the greater Los Angeles area. 
Here we go. This makes more sense. Okay, so we have 2007 in the world. There were 355 vegan restaurants. Now there are 32, 84 vegan restaurants as of 2015. And I just put this slide together a couple weeks ago. So that's pretty, pretty current. Um, you can see an exp it looks like an exponential growth, doesn't it? Maybe it'll take off after this. Okay, final vegan tips. So question everything. I've been questioning everything for so many years now. I know a lot about a lot of things. Um, these are just some notes that I took. Refried beans often contain pork fat. I don't know if you have Mexican restaurants around, but be careful when you're getting a bean dish because if you're vegan, you don't want to eat pork fat. Orange juice is really strange because on a lot of airlines, they fortify it with vitamin D and their, vitamin, their uh, orange juice is not vegan. It's got animal products in it. Um, soy cheese and milk may have casein, which is animal products. Pasta, especially in Argentina and Chile, often has eggs in it. So, um, and I always say, don't assume marinara sauce has, uh, doesn't contain fish. Um, scientists have introduced a spray derived from shrimp and crab shells, allow bananas to stay fresh for a longer period of time. So if you're a true vegan, you have to be careful about regular bananas if you're trying to stay away from animal products altogether. I probably should tell you why I'm vegan, but I'm, I'll do that for another day. Um, now, white sugar, not all sugar is, um, has, a lot of sugar has bone char in it, which is not vegan. Apple juice, some apple juices have uh, animal products in them, bladder of fish. Turmeric, really good for swelling if you want to prevent Alzheimer's disease, dementia. Take turmeric every day. Just take some powder, put it on your food, take a pill. Um, it's helped my dad tremendously with, he tripped in the forest, he hurt his leg, and the swelling went down, and he's really happy about that. Dry roasted planter peanuts have gelatin. These are just some notes I've taken over the years on you know, vegan food. I was in Italy, I interviewed some people in Italy, they were on MTV, and they told me that the pizza crust in Italy oftentimes has lard in it, which is animal derived. So you have to be careful if you get a veggie pizza. Um, Argentina bread often contains beef fat, as I mentioned before. Uh, tempura, I used to, you know, I remember initially I thought tempura was um, just, you know, batter, but it actually has egg in it. Um, you might want to ask to cook your food on a separate grill if you're strict vegan. Never assume a dish is vegan because it looks vegan. And remember that being completely vegan would probably require living in a cave because even your shoes right now, even the, the car tires on your car probably have animal products in them. Um, the fact is, is, I always say just do your best. I'm not going to get into the uh, issues as far as environmental issues. I'm sure plenty of other people, you can watch videos on that all day and night about how the impact from animal husbandry and raising animals is far more detrimental to the environment than all the planes, trains, automobiles, and the transportation industry combined as far as the methane emissions versus CO2 emissions. I could get into all of that, but I recommend you do research on why become vegan. Why, to, why are we vegan? Um, what, ma what makes us vegan? It's really important. Um, I want to make this sort of a positive experience because I know you've probably seen animal rights things and I just want to make this more fun. And uh, Happy Cow is about fun. As far as the Happy Cow app, I'd recommend you know, download the app, check out our website, contribute restaurants if you can. If a restaurant here in Norway or in Oslo is closed, please let us know. We can't possibly go to every restaurant in the world every day, but we do have ambassadors. We have over 175 ambassadors around the world in different countries to represent our company, which is cool. So they help us to, to keep track of the restaurants that are opening, closing, and things like that. So that's pretty much what we're doing. Um, is, that, is, that, uh, is that time? Or? Oh, keep going? Okay. Um, a couple things I wanted to let you know. I have um, a couple of chocolate bars I got given to me from uh, Vegan's grocery store chain that I'm going to give away. So how many of you like chocolate? How many of you hate chocolate? We don't have any chocolate haters in here? Uh oh Okay, and the other thing is, um, how many of you are vegetarians? Again, can you please raise your hands? Okay. How many of you are vegetarians because you can't give up cheese and you, you feel like your life would be forever ruined if you were to give up cheese? How many of you heard of Miyoko's Kitchen Cheese? Okay, how many of you have tried Miyoko Kitchen Cheese? What if I told you I have some Miyoko Kitchen Cheese for you to try that I brought from Los Angeles? I do. So, that's in my bag. Um, what I'd like you to do is, you know, after the show, if you are interested in trying her cheese, just come up. I brought a scissor and a knife. I can cut it open right here. We can try some of her cheese. I absolutely love it. It's made of cashews, and it's phenomenal. The other thing I, I think is just phenomenal. How many of you have heard of Impossible Foods? Impossible Foods is a company that Google wanted to buy for $300 million. Why? They've created a hamburger that tastes like a hamburger. Why does it taste like a hamburger when other vegan burgers taste like vegan burgers, even though they taste good? Heme iron, animal iron, heme iron. They've created blood from root vegetables 
The inventor, when he invented this blood, said that when he tasted the blood, or when he tasted this concoction that he had come up with, he thought his lip was bleeding. He took this concoction of root vegetable heme iron, he put it into a bean burger, and it tastes just like a burger. Google found out about this, and they wanted to buy the company. They're coming on September with their Impossible Burger. I don't know if it's going to be called the Impossible Burger, it's called Impossible Foods. So if you want to look that up, it's Impossible Foods. It looks like it's going to be a cool product. I've not tried it yet, but I hear great things about it. So, so as I mentioned, cheese is one of the reasons, and eggs, you could say, are two of the reasons why vegan, vegetarians haven't become vegan. Um, Bill Gates is aware of the issues of animal husbandry. He's put a lot of money into creating the vegan egg. There is Beyond Egg. There is the Veg. So there's vegan egg substitutes now. And there's meat substitutes, which many of you have probably tried. But the one thing you probably haven't tried is vegan cheese that really tastes great. So I'm going to end my speech on that note. And I'm going to ask if any of you have any questions of me or any questions about veganism or any of you uh, still awake. Anybody? Questions, answers? Then I have a question of you. Uh, where, just I'm going to ask someone randomly, um, what, what is your favorite vegan destination in the world? Just uh, you over there. Yeah. Which one? Warsaw. Yeah, yeah. And isn't it surprising that, I mean, in my mind, Warsaw was all about sausages and bad food. In fact, when I went to Warsaw last year, every person that I talked to that I contacted on Facebook and Couchsurfing said, oh, you're from Los Angeles, you're not going to like the food here. It's just not as good as what you're going to expect. It was as good or better, you know. You get to that point where food is so good that it can't get much better. So, anyone else? Favorite vegan destinations in the world that you want to share? How about you? Right there. Yes. It's a country? Yeah, but I think it's Sweden. Sweden. Isn't it 9% of Swedes are vegetarian? It's very high. It's like you can go to like uh, most other uh, places and you can get uh, uh, vegan. Yeah. That's what's really nice about a country like Sweden. Right when I got off the airplane at the Sweden airport, I, go to, I, I walk by and I see a salad bar at 7-Eleven. Good luck at getting 7-Elevens in the United States to have salad bars. I was shocked to see a salad bar. Um, that's rare in a lot of places, but yeah, Sweden's doing well. Who, who does? 7-Eleven, they have vegan, really, in Sweden or here? In Sweden, okay, cool, cool. Has anyone tried, um, what are they, it's, a, it's a German company, uh, Weedy Vegan Sausages. You've tried those? What do you think of those? Yeah, they're really good. Germany has come up with some of the greatest vegan meat products ever. Just to give you an idea, Vegan's Grocery Store has over 100 types of vegan cheese alone. To give you an idea of where this is going. So, you know, the vegan sausages, Germany. Germany has sort of a corner, you know, the, uh, the stronghold on a lot of the ve great vegan products right now. And Vegan's, by the way, is putting out their own brand of products. The products I have are Vegan's brand chocolate bars. So, and Vegan's may be coming to... Uh, couple of countries nearby, so I can't really say what those yeah. countries are. Um, anything else? Anyone have any questions, comments? Um, how many of you are now considering going vegan? Raise your hands again. And just to ask you right there, why are you, uh, you're vegetarian? You are, and is it because of cheese? Is, eggs too or cheese? Both, okay. Anyone else? You? Because of the cheese? Okay. Have you ever tried Violife cheese? No? Okay. Cool. Well, anyway, thank you. Is that, is that time? Okay, cool. Well, thank you all for coming. If you want to try the vegan cheese. Oh, as far as the chocolate bars go, let me ask a trivia question. This will be tough. What was the name of the tree that put off that weird looking pine nut? Does anyone remember? Uh, yeah, I don't even remember myself. What? That's correct. You get a chocolate bar for that. Okay. Um, what, uh, let's see here. Um, mm, 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 mm. Okay, which city in the world has the second most vegan restaurants in the world? Okay, that was a bad question. Okay, what about the, the eighth? I'd have to go back to that slide to be able to figure that one out. Anyone know the eighth? Okay, what, um, which city has the most vegan restaurants 
per capita? You have to raise your hand on this one. Don't just yell at the answer so I can pick someone. Has the most vegan restaurants per capita, per person? Prague, you're correct. Okay, you got it. But you yelled it out. Should I give it to her? Clap, no? Yeah, I'll give it. Okay. Um, that's two. I think I have one more. Um, how, uh, how about what, uh, what airline, in my opinion, has the best food? Okay, let me ask another question. Um, hmm, notice I didn't rehearse this. How about what city, what city has, uh, what island has the most vegan restaurants in the world? And I mentioned it. It's an island, it's an island in Thailand. <laughs> okay, that's it. You got it anyway. Copenhagen. Okay, cool. Okay, that's it. Um, if you want to try the vegan cheese, come on up. Um, just wait in line and I can give you a little sample. And you could try the vegan cheese of the future. And thank you very much for coming and enjoy the show and appreciate it. Thanks.